After a cold, wet winter, it felt wonderful to see the first signs of spring on our morning walk. The wildflowers in the bush beside the property are in full bloom. We've been making the most of our new tractor and the longer days to get some tidying up done around the property. We've also been enjoying the evenings outdoors by the fire after a hard day's work clearing the overgrown blackberry and shrubs. We set up the black and grey Australop chickens next to our brown Highland chickens in their own separate electric netting enclosures. Over winter Troy salvaged some pallet wood from our local hardware store and various materials around the farm to construct this chicken mobile. He's done an incredible job building this entirely out of free materials and I think it looks quite smart. This has been pretty successful, the chooks have liked it. <laughs> okay. Um, and also these wheels have worked really, really well. The big rolling diameter has handled this, um, this very textured <laughs> ground, if you like, where the pigs have rooted up. The smaller wheels on the other enclosure for the brown chooks, the Isa browns, that's harder, that's harder to operate. You can drag it fine, but going back the other way is difficult. This is a lot lighter, um, a much more mobile. It's a smaller unit, but those chooks, when they get in there, they really pack in. There's, there's room for more of them, so that's, um, it's worked out really well. There's electric fence all around the perimeter, um, so the local foxes are very wary about uh, the electric fence. They've, I think they've been hit a few times, so we haven't seen them. Jet's actually come of age now, since we lost our other chooks and she was useless. She's, um, she's gotten better now, and um, she's got a bit of whippet in her, so she's got a bit of sight hound, and she really likes to, anything that's scurrying, whether it's our cats or rabbits or whatever, she likes to put a chase on them, and if I was a fox, I wouldn't like that very much. Oh. They were pooing in there before a couple of the chooks were getting in there and roosting in the egg laying boxes but I stuck some newspaper in and they haven't done it now so it's all just under here. Water is attached to the unit just like these other ones with one of these little drinkers around here. And Pasky's put another one here. That just goes on a hook every now and then she'll medicate that with a bit of apple cider vinegar. Um, at the moment, the chooks have been having a little bit of an interesting poo, and I think, <laughs> I think they might have got a nice heavy dose. But um, they used this one because they were raised on that when they were little chicks, so they recognise that pretty easily. And um, at the moment, this hose is just connected to a, a thousand litre container. It's, it's got a couple hundred litres of water in it, so we don't really have to change their water that often. We've got three roosters for sure. Oh, that's two. Yeah, those two. And that black one at the back. And that black one. And then the rest look like hens. They look like hens. Don't <laughs> <Goat> ninja. Yep. <laughs> 
Part of my fortnightly routine is tending to the kombucha, bottling the fermented tea with seasonal flavours and preparing a new sweet black tea batch on the stove. We don't drink alcohol much but we really enjoy our kombucha with lunch. Slightly acid and with a small amount of sugar and caffeine, it's a great pick me up to fight off the afternoon lethargy so we can get back outside to get some work done. We're just having a bit of a fire, um, burning off uh, some old prunings, some branches, some bits and pieces from this paddock next door that the pigs dug up uh, three months ago, I think now. But um, yeah, I've been kept busy pulling out all the blackberry from the fajar, um, which is in front of me now, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it's been a good synergy because when I found any branches with leaf on them, the goats have been able to eat those leaves before I throw it on the fire. So. The goats are getting a feed, we're clearing the blackberry out and yeah, we've got a fire going and it's all working out. You sure can get a lot of work done very quickly <laughs> with a tractor. So uh, the goats are getting the scraps of black prey right now. And we've actually been able to use the mattock and pitchfork and get up all of those like bulbs of root with the black prey. There'll still be black there, but um, we wouldn't have been able to get in there and really rip it out without pruning it back hard, which is fine. Because it'll grow back nice and strong, I think. It's pretty vigorous, that fajor. It does all right. Mmm, tasty blackberry. He's beautiful. So he's a nice little thing. He's not even trying to bite me. Mm -hmm. I guess it's still cold. It's cold pretty cold. We'll find a spot for him that I'm not going to annoy for a while. Maybe under here. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. that's better. There he goes. So what's really wonderful now is that we've kind of come full circle with our goats. They're really um, quite attached to us now and uh, we can let them out in the day, especially if we're staying in the house and they'll just graze around the house, which is perfect because there's a lot of overgrown shrubs, there's lots of tall grass and they really enjoy browsing on that. So it's really lovely to just look out the window and see them munching big clumps of grass. Um, grazing on the agapanthus and the other trees around the um, peppermint trees and the pine trees just around the property. It's really nice and you would have already seen that they they got, go for walks with me now in the morning and the afternoon so they're used to that so 
it's really great. On days that it's raining, I can just grab them big bunches of browse from around the property. So it was like the perfect addition to the property at this stage. We don't have any fruit trees planted or anything like that. The veggie garden that we're going to start is nicely fenced and I don't expect them to jump in there. Um, maybe we'll have to put another another level of fencing above. We'll see how we go with them. But they're not, they're not as intrepid as um, the boa goats or wild goats. So um, they're pretty docile and they haven't eaten anything um, that we love yet. <laughs> yet <laughs> so yeah i'm really happy that we've got these goats um, and they seem to be adjusting really well and enjoying their time on the ramshackle ranch <laughs> after brining all winter our olives were finally ready to be put into jars we placed most of them in fresh brine or olive oil for storage, but we also made up some marinated batches with rosemary, preserved lemon, garlic and chilli. One fallen tree remained on the pasture for Troy to tidy up with the chainsaw and tractor. He put aside the larger branches and any trunks the tractor could manage ready for next year's firewood supply and future rustic builds on the farm. Fine, spindly or tangled limbs, or limbs that were in a difficult shape to use, and their accompanying leaves were burnt beside one of the stumps of the fallen bluegum trees. After two days work on the machinery, some order had been restored, ready for the next step to regenerate this particular plot of land. Okay, there we go. The, the pasture that we want, to, um, we want to regenerate. We've cleared all the timber away now, um, and I was just having a look at it. The pigs have done such a great job. So, dominating this pasture before, it was it, you couldn't even really call it pasture. It was a slope just covered in Guildford grass. So Guildford grass is considered quite a hard to eradicate um, weed around here. It's a South African plant. It was brought over for whatever reason, but it's, it's very happy here now. <laughs> and people have a hard time getting rid of it. So I, I have been told also that it favours soils that are in um, poor nutrient condition as well. We want to overseed that pasture. Um, with some competitive species. So there is still some Guildford grass there. The pigs have dug it up and they've left a lot of the bulbs on the surface. They ate some as well, all right? They put on quite a bit of weight doing it and they really seem to enjoy it. But they've left a lot of bulbs laying on the surface. They could potentially have um, regrown as well. But the parrots around here have really enjoyed coming in um, and cracking them open. As soon as they do, that renders them uh, you know, not viable anymore for the future. So I've had a bit of a look and what used to be sort of like 80 to 90% Guildford grass, the regrowth that I've seen is less than 20%. You know, like not much of it's coming and there's just a lot of bulbs laying on the surface. But what we need to do now is go and seed this pasture. So we're just opting to um, hand broadcast. We don't have a seed spreader and I don't want to make the investment of getting one at this early stage anyway. So we're just going to hand broadcast it. Those same parrots that came and ate the Guildford grass, what happens is um, I did a trial patch before and as soon as you throw any seeds out, of course the, the bush telegraph gets going and all the birds show up for an easy meal. Um, I don't really want them eating this stuff. I think, I don't know whether there might be fungicides or anything on there. So it's bad for my hip pocket, but it, I don't want to cause any bird problems either. So what we're going to do is um, I've made a, a type of harrow that can be towed behind the tractor. So it's 
uh, basically some uh, materials that I found around the farm and I've welded it all together into sort of like a large rake. But what we want is, we want the, um, the, the harrow as it is at the moment to, to lay off some, some little furrows in the ground that the seeds will be swallowed up by, but then we need them covered over as well. So, I've got these. Now, we have been using um, these spare tyres here to just confine the goats, um, just for the early weeks that they were here, just so that they got the smell of the property and they were used to um, being out of their little home. We were tethering them here with this very lightweight chain. Um, and it was never meant to be a long-term solution, but we just wanted them to, to uh, you know, become accustomed to us and the property. Now they're just free-ranging. They just do their thing. They, um, we let them out in the morning. They basically follow us around and come for walks with us and the dog up <laughs> through the bush. Um, and they never really stray more than 50 metres from us. But they're, they're just, they've just got the run of the place at the moment. So the tyres that we've been using um, to, to contain our goats, I originally got them for this project. So what I'm going to do is just cut the sidewalls out and we'll strap it all together and we'll put it behind the harrow and we'll, we'll show you the result. Pretty low cost uh, approach, which if you've been with us for a while, you'll know that that's our, our favorite MO. So there we go. I just went down to the local um, tire place and said, excuse me, have you got any old tires that I can just take? <laughs> because, um, you know, save them, save them getting rid of them in the rubbish. So I've saved them a bit of money, so they're very, very happy to give me these tires. And I'm very, very happy to take them. So I'm just after the side walls at the moment, so we'll cut those out. And then if anyone's um, got any ideas of what you do with the this bit, the tread part of the tire, if anyone out there has got any comments, hit us up in the comments section and let me know. Because I'm sort of racking my brains what to do with it at the moment. I'm, I'm loath to throw it out after I'm finished here because I'm sure that that could be useful for something. So I started that off with a Stanley knife, a box cutter. Um, and I mean, you could do the whole thing that way. I just find the reciprocal saws. It's pretty easy and there's no chance of losing control and sort of slashing, <laughs> slashing yourself. So. I mean, that's pretty quick, but I'll we'll just stick with this one. It just seems to be less hazardous, unless you leave these laying around open. to be useful for something. I know you can make um, flower beds out of it, I guess, but it still looks like a tyre then, but we'll see how we go. So now I've got these, and I have another two there from making the pigs feeding troughs. So why don't we go ahead and we'll link them all together. Now this was the, uh, this was the harrow that I made before. Um, it's just welded together out of stuff that I found on the farm. Quite lucky to find this sort of stuff laying around. The hardest bit about this was actually just cutting the bird's mouth where I got this pipe joining the other pipe. So you can either flip it up this way or have it where these square washers here act as teeth and sort of furrow the ground. But we're going to, um, we're going to add these ties to it now and um, you know, and that should act to sort of cover up any seed that gets thrown behind. So this will disrupt the earth and then the tyres, you know, they'll, they'll cover, cover up any seed that goes in. This steel beam, obviously it's steel and it's very rigid. The land tends to be like that, you know. Um, so this will just ride on the high points and the low points won't really be affected. After a few passes with this, of course, it sort, of, it sort of chews it up and it starts to, but we don't want to level this field. We just want to, we just want to upset the earth a bit so there's some ripped up ground that the seeds can get into. So there's, um, there's all our tyres wired up in their, in their little matrix. 
So the final bit will just be a bit of chain. And what I'm going to do is just loop it through one of these holes. And each one of these square teeth has a hole through because it's a square washer. Pop the chain through those. And somewhere laying around here, <laughs> I've, got little, I've got some chain links. Here's one right here. Look at that. So I can, um, I can put those on quite easily. All this was recycled goods, so pretty happy. We'll see how it turns out. Let's go and have a look at, um, at some of the pasture that the pigs have gone through before, and we did this um, process too, and we'll see what's popping up. There's three different spots, one that I hand raked, one that I didn't do at all, and one that I harrowed. So I hope this shows up on camera, but on this side, we just left pig disturbance and um, some scattered chicken food, the chicken seed and stuff like that. Not much reseeding happened here, but on this side, um, we reseeded and we also harrowed afterwards so the birds didn't come back and eat the seeds. And I can really see the difference. Um, so over here we do have, it looks a bit green. Okay, maybe on camera you're saying, oh, well, that, that's not too bad. You'll see the cover is a lot spare, uh, sparser and also it's more of that um, the onion grass, the Guildford grass weed that we wanted to get rid of. But you'll see that without, um, normally, you know, when we first came, the Guildford grass was a fairly solid carpet, but you can see the pigs have really knocked the wind out of it. So there's a lot of patches um, that haven't been recolonized. Whereas on this side, you can see it's a very, very uniform green coming back. These are very early days. We haven't really had that warmth to get everything kicked off. We've got a southern aspect, so that's good if you're in the northern hemisphere. What it means is it's facing away from the sun. So it's not a super sunny block and particularly here. And the other thing is we've got a lot of trees and those gum trees suck a lot of nutrients out of the soil. So this past year has a lot to compete with, but so far it's going, doing pretty well. What I am happy to see is that there's uh, quite a few young pea plants that are popping up. So they're going to fix some nitrogen. They're going to be really great. I'm looking forward to seeing more plantain and coxfoot come through. Um, and there's some chicory in here as well, which has got a nice bit deep tap root. And we can, maybe we can bring some of those nutrients up from down deep and, and set it on here. Um, I have been told that I'll never get rid of the Guildford grass unless I apply um, high nitrogen fertilizer and superphosphate here. But, um, I, and I'm not poo-pooing that idea, but what I wanted to try first is just, um, just see how we go with a seed mix, see if it responded, see if we can mine some stuff up. And don't forget there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, well, pig poo in here, as well as pig wee and all the rest of it. So I'm hoping the money that we invested in pig food is our investment in fertilizer. But it's looking good. So, um, you know, it's a positive step in, in trying, to, trying to bring this, this property back into better condition. It, it's looking good, you know, I'm, I'm encouraged. And you need those little encouraging steps for the work that you do. By way of comparison, I've looked back on some footage Troy shot in June, which really shows the poor quality of the pasture before we put the pigs on it and spread the regenerative seed mix. So you can see this is the pre-pig paddock. Um, it's pretty poor stuff, you know, it's like very, very short um, mosses, uh, this onion grass sort of gear. Not much, There's, um, it's a little bit rocky beneath the surface, so there's not much going on. Okay, so that's the block that has been harrowed. And again, I'm on the edge of the, the test plot that we didn't do anything really with, and you can still see it's all a little bit messy. Over here, you can see there's a brown line here, not much going on, but over here, um, now this, I broadcast um, our regen mix, but I just tried raking it in. <clears throat> it wasn't as successful. So what happened is there were some places where I was a little bit more diligent. I got some good, uh, good coverage. Um, and the seed has responded really well. Other parts, I skipped or didn't do a very good job. The parrots came down, they ate a lot. <laughs> so, so we've got sort of like a bit of a, a serpentine pasture here at the moment. But <clears throat> I'm really happy that the, with the harrowing, it's very, very uniform. That did a very good job of getting the seeds down and under. Me with a rake, not so good. I wasn't that great at it. Um, up here is particularly lush and that's where the chicken house was. So. There's quite a bit of whatever was in the chickens, um, the seed mix, you know, that they've, they've scratched in themselves. They are very efficient at burying seed, so that's particularly thick around here. And when the goats wander down here, they spend a lot of time around there. Oh, you can hear our ducks. 
So all our ducks are free ranging at the moment and they just tend to go and hang out on um, on Don's dam but they can hear me <laughs> talking to the camera. Oh look at them, they're swimming around on the dam out there. Hey ducks. So that's those paddocks. Um, here's a, here's a, a section of ground that the pigs went over that we haven't done anything to at all. So this was, um, we were incorrectly calling it clover. I've had a bit of a look um, since and this is uh, what's called sour sop is all through here the pigs really loved it um, and it looks like the soursop really enjoyed the pigs disturbance as well because this has come back like incredibly if you look further down um, this way we can see that it's really just like pumped back the, the growth is really really crazy i was hoping that they would disturb like a quite a variety of weeds um, seeing what's in the seed bank underground you know what it hasn't um it hasn't done a lot up here so when the pigs come back through here again they'll dig up that sour salt all over again and then we'll then we'll follow them through um, with a more desirable seed mix but we can't get a tractor in here all right so this this we will have to sort of um, hand harrow or just otherwise known as raking it isn't it it looks good yeah it's been down there a couple of weeks so it's ready for a little bit of uh, pampering pesky yep Just on apple parts, flour to lard, and this is making a thing called strato. So this is supposed to hold the moisture in where there's not skin around around the ham. This is made with the leaf lard from the the same pick. Leaf lard is the lard that was uh, around the belly and near the organ meat. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. So that's just the flour and the lard combined. Now. We have covered it with strato, which was that lard mixed with flour. Um, and that's just going to keep the moisture in the meat now while it cures for the next 10 months. <laughs> so it's a waiting game now. But we'll hang it up where it was before. With a week of rain showers forecast, it was time to test out the modified Harrow, with Troy's nieces joining us for the ride. As pigs naturally mound the earth, making the ground uneven, the new and improved Harrow, with the cut-off tyres attached, was effective in spreading the soil to cover the seeds without levelling the ground too much. A walk around the field after we completed the task showed that it had worked successfully, with very few seeds remaining on the surface. It was hard to get an even covering of seeds standing on the back of the carryall, so next time we might drive a bit slower with the tractor. Waiting to be let out. Quack, quack. <laughs> These rotten ducks are making this work for our legs. I know. Ducks are such strange creatures. Mm. Like they've made a nice straw nest and everything else, but they much prefer to come in here to this thicket and lay the eggs in the dirt. Go on. Go to work. Thanks for joining us this week for our first episode of spring. Join us next week as we begin planting our garden. I can't wait to share it all with you and we look forward to seeing you then. If you enjoyed the video, thanks also for hitting the like button. And if you're new here, it'd be really great if you could subscribe 
as it helps get this video out to like-minded audiences. See you next time.